Knowing how to create simulations of your hardware code is highly important. In fact, when creating complex designs, an engineer is spending about 70% of their time in simulating their hardware code and 30% on doing actual hardware implementation. My name is Grady, I'm with Simply Embedded, and today I'm going to show you how to use Vivado Simulator and create a test bench in Verilog HDL. So let's get started. Before we start, if you're new to FPGA programming, check out this card right here to learn more about how to get started with FPGA programming. Assuming you're new to this YouTube channel, consider subscribing and make sure you ring the bell to be notified about future video uploads. If you like this video, hit the like button. Now, let's get into the tutorial. Before we can simulate anything, we need to create a design that can be simulated in the first place. We would design an RGB LED indicator for a sensor and we will use Vivada Simulator to test the code. RGB LED is a package of three LEDs, red, green, and blue. So if your development board doesn't have an RGB LED, you can use three regular LEDs instead. Also, our input won't be an actual sensor, we will use switches instead. Anyways, let's design this indicator. First, we will create a through table and map in every combination of the switches. When the value of switches is less than four in binary, the RGB LED will indicate with red color. If the value of the switches is greater or equal to 4 and less than 10 in binary, the RGB LED will indicate with blue color. Last, if the value of the switches is greater and equal to 10 in binary, the output is green. For now, I'll give you minimized equations for each color. If you want me to do a video on how to minimize digital logic equations using different techniques such as K-maps, let me know in the comment sections below. If there's enough interest on this concept, I'll create a video on it. Other than that, let's continue with the tutorial. Create a new project and name it RGB Indicator. Now, instead of manually typing out your inputs and outputs, you can define the IO ports in the Define Module window. So you can go ahead and type switch here, make it a bus from 3 to 0. You will also need three outputs, red, green, and blue. Then press OK. Now we can go ahead and write the minimized equations into our Verilog code. Assign red equals to not switch 3 and not switch 2. Do the same thing for blue and green based on the minimized logic. Alright, we have finished our Verilog module and let's simulate it now. To create a simulation file, right click on simulation source folder and select add sources. Select add or create simulation sources, create a file and name it as test bench. Press OK here and then yes. Open up the test bench file you created. For any test bench file I create, I like to copy all of the inputs and outputs from the module I want to simulate. Since the test bench won't be synthesized, it won't have any inputs and outputs since those already exist in the top module. Now you can paste the code here. Every input will need to be turned into a register or a reg in Verilog. A register retains its values until a new value is assigned to it, which means that a value can be stored in it. A register can be synthesized to a flip-flop, latch, or a combination of logic. I'll be talking about this in the future tutorials. All the outputs will be turned into test wires. Unlike registers, wires don't store values and act as simple wires that can have values assigned to them. You can only initialize registers, so initialize the switch to zero by writing equals zero after switch. Change the commas to semicolons. Think of the registers as inputs and wires as outputs only in the test bench module. This will not be the case in actual design source files, which I'll show you in the future. Now let's create a unit under test, UUT. Essentially, this is a wrapper that will tie the inputs and outputs of the Verilog file we are simulating to the registers and wires in the test bench file. The syntax for this is as follows. Dot switch, this one is from the top module, parenthesis begin, switch, this one is from the register from the simulation file, parenthesis end, and comma. Do the same for the outputs, red, green, and blue, Although keep in mind, the last one doesn't have a comma in the end. You can also create a unit under test wrapper using a different kind of syntax. In this case, you need to know the order of inputs and outputs for the module being simulated. So we can go ahead and type in switch, 
from the simulation file, red, green, and blue from the simulation file as well. And that's it. They just need to be in the correct and exact order. For now, let's stick with the first UUT syntax. Define an integer that we can use to change values of the switches in a loop. An integer in Verilog is a register bus that is 32 bits wide. Continue with the syntax. Initial, begin, and end. In between will be the code for what will happen with the simulation. So a good practice is always to initialize your registers. Next, create a for loop that will be awfully similar to what you're able to see in C programming. Since the switch's bus is 4 bits wide, we only need to go through 0 to 15 to cover all the combinations for all the switches. In reality, any circuit has a delay. There is a delay from input to output. In order to mimic that delay, you can use hashtag and some number. So let's create a 10 unit delay. Now the time scale on the top will come into play. The first value is reference time and the second as precision. If the reference time is changed to 10 nanoseconds, our simulation delay will be 100 nanoseconds for each time the program goes through each iteration of the for loop. Because the hashtag 10 is multiplied by the reference time, so 10 times 10 would be 100 nanoseconds. Now you can say switch equals to k, where switch will equal to any value that k is. So every time you go through the for loop, the value of k increases. Add finish to the end of your code so that the simulator knows when to finish. Now click run simulation. After the simulation opens up, you can see all the elements used in the test bench file. You can change how the values are displayed by right clicking on them, choosing radix and then onside decimal. Do the same for k. If you double click on the untitled one tab, the screen will get bigger. If you want to do zoom fit, you can press this button or you can click on the simulation screen and hold the mouse button pressed and move the mouse toward top left corner and then release the mouse button. Currently the simulation goes till 8 for the values of the switches. You can keep running the simulation by pressing the play button to the right. This one only keeps running the simulation for the amount of time specified in the box or until the test bench finishes. The other play button will run the program infinitely or until the test bench finishes. Now, let's analyze the data. From the simulation, we can see the time scale. So if I click between 0 and 2, we can see that the change in time is 100 nanoseconds. Test is expected because of the delay. We can see that there is an output 1 for red when the switches are 0 to 3. There is an output for blue when the switches are 4 to 9, just as expected. But there is no output for green, which means that we made a mistake. Let's go back to the top module. Let's analyze the green signal. Well, I can see that there is an AND sign, which should be an OR sign instead. Save the Verilog file. You don't need to click Run Simulation again. Instead, press Relaunch Simulation, the circular arrow button you can run the simulation for another 900 nanoseconds. Now the green output signal has appeared as we expected. Also, if you want to zoom into a specific area, you can hold the left mouse button and then drag to your right to zoom into a specific area. Or you can use the zoom in and zoom out buttons on the toolbar. Now that we have verified that our code works as expected in the simulation, go ahead and create a constraints file if you haven't done that yet. Make sure you have filled out the XDC file properly. Then generate bitstream, program the bitstream to your board, and test the design on the board. You should see red, blue, and green light based on the position of the switches. Keep up the good work, and see you next time.